Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Today we will make our hitboxes smaller. It's not really ideal to have the hitbox as big as the sprite itself, better to have the hitbox smaller than the sprites, and that is because it's gonna help us with collision detection later down the road. So let's go! Just a quick reminder, all of the code I cover in my videos can be found on GitHub. Each episode will have its own branch. There's also a Discord server for this channel. Come in and say hello. If you wish to go the extra mile to support my work, you can do that on my Buy My Coffee page or becoming a member here on YouTube. Links can be found in the description below. In a world where our hitbox is the same size as the sprites we have, we would have a hard time passing through any type of corridor that is just one sprite wide. So for example, I have my player here, the white border around it is the hitbox, the green here is walls, and we have the corridor here to the left. So if I wanna run in here, I have to be exactly in the right position before entering. But if I'm just a little bit off, like one pixel off, I'm gonna hit the wall, so I won't be able to go in here. If I'm one pixel too much, I'm gonna hit the wall down here, so I can't enter. That's very frustrating when the hitbox is the same size as the sprite. So an alternative to this is to... Oh, I forgot my sad smile here because it doesn't work. All right, now, happy smiley. So alternative to this is to make the hitbox, like we see here, smaller, but the sprite is the same. Just the hitbox is smaller. I'm gonna hide that one. That makes it much easier to run into any corridor, door, whatever you have. We're gonna have a lot more room to play around with. So this is a happy sprite. This is a sad sprite. So we're gonna go with the happy sprite. This is the one we're gonna go with. And the size of the hitbox is now going to go from 16 by 16. That's the default size. And I wanna turn it to 12 by 12, which is this one. And as we can see, the only thing that is changed is the size of the hitbox, of course. But the hitbox is moved down four pixels and to the right, two pixels. So these values we need to keep in mind when we wanna center the image for the hitbox. So let's go ahead and just add them real quick. Let's take a quick look at our current progress. So let's start here. We can see that the hitbox is, well, the entire sprite. So into our game constant class for our sprite inner class, we're gonna add a public static final int and we can call this hitbox size we might have different hitbox sizes later down the road but for now we only have the skeleton and the player and they have the same size i think there is a boss that is bigger but uh, for now we're gonna keep just one name for it uh, hitbox size equals 12 and we need to multiply that with scale multiplier Otherwise, it's going to be very small. That's it for our game constant class for now. Let's jump over to our character class. Here we set the size of our hitbox by just passing in size <laughs> and size and width and height, is it? But here we're just setting the hitbox. We don't put in any values here. We're just using whatever we're giving the character class. So instead of size, we're going to say hitbox underscore size. We can go up here and remove the size import. And let's take a look at how it appears in the game now. So we clearly have a much smaller hitbox. It's easier to see on the skeletons, but the offset is not correct. The hitbox is still in the same place. The sprite is still in the same place, but we need to change how it looks when we draw the sprite. To deal with our hitboxes looking like they're not in the correct spot, even though they are, it's just a sprite that needs to be drawn with an offset, we need to remember the values from this image. We move the hitbox down four steps from the default sprite and two pixels to the right. So into our game constant class, where are you? There you are. And in the same sprite, in our class, we add two more constants, public static final int x draw offset equals two times scale multiplier 
public static final int y draw offset equals four times scale multiplier. So in our playing, right? Yes. Where is our player? Draw player. Da, 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 da. Get this is the bitmap. This is the hitbox. It's the bitmap. So plus uh, game constant sprite extra offset. Uh, we can copy that for that. So we need y offset here. Yes, and then for our characters, da, 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 draw characters, we have the sprite and the hitbox, and it's the sprite. So plus camera, plus uh, extra offset. Oh, we can remove one plus, and then plus the y offset for y. Let's see if that looks better. Starting out, and it looks terrible. And that is because we're not moving the hitbox, we're moving the sprite, so we actually need to move it to the left, or minus, we need to go minus, we can't go plus, so minus the offset and minus the offset. And the player here somewhere, there it is, minus and minus. All right, let's give this a try. I think that should work. And there we go. Our hitbox is in the correct spot. And we can probably, yep, we can still kill that. All right, so the next episode is going to be about solving or fixing the position of the sword's hitbox because it's too close to the player. It's not matching up with the sprite because now we have made the hitbox smaller. So the sword is closer to the player, which is not ideal. So yeah, I think that's going to be the next episode. All right, I thought I would make some shorter videos to be able to post more often. Many reasons why the upload speed is slow at the moment. The longer length of the videos is one of them, so I want to keep them short and sweet. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more episodes. Take care now and have a wonderful day. Bye.